this week. Having a look through the front pages of the newspapers with us this morning is Jenny Critchlow, based in Clapperton in Warwickshire, self-help expert, runs the Peach Gym, joins us this morning on BBC CWR. Morning, Jenny. Morning, Phil. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks very much indeed. How's your weekend? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Really yeah. nice. Did you get up to anything? Yeah. No, nothing up. It's really ah. nice. <laughs> Uh, we like weekends like that, uh, yeah, don't yeah. we? A uh, lot of uh, attention for uh, Strictly in the newspapers uh, this morning. Nine million of us tuned in for the return of Strictly Come, uh, Strictly Come Dancing on the Telly uh, and the Glitter Ball. Uh, and apparently that's the biggest show launch audience since 2017. I don't know, do, uh, has that caught your attention at all? Oh, you know what, Phil? I don't watch it. Don't you? I'm, a, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a maverick. I'm not one of the oh, nine yeah. million. I'm a maverick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm okay. Just, <laughs> straight, straight away, I've gone top gun there. So, uh, there we go. All right. Uh, you have um, uh, gone to a story in The Guardian, though, here, which is, um, uh, uh, talks a bit about, um, well, white collar uh, workers, office workers, professionals, if you like, who've uh, mm-hmm. who have developed a, addictions during this pandemic yeah i'm not even addicted to strictly at all it actually it was really interesting ask me about this collision of two epidemics which is covid and then the stuff we're using to cope with it so perhaps it's better and perhaps i should get into strictly actually phil um yeah. is it perhaps it's better to watch strictly than taking drugs but really that there's this rise in relapse and rise in addiction because of COVID, and it's really a, a, a symptom of what we're all doing, which is numbing ourselves from stuff we don't enjoy. Right. Um, and again, you know, like watching the season would be much better than taking the drugs. Uh, but it's bringing out the best and worst in us, this, um, this COVID. Well, uh, all that's going on. We, you know, and we, we've made big play here on BBC CWR via our, our Make a Difference campaign to hear about the good mm. and all the, the, the wonderful actions and the the kind, human, spirited yeah. stuff that people, you know, all across Coventry and Warwickshire have done in the last six, uh, eight months or so. But uh, then you hear a story like this and you you wonder, I mean, you know, th- th- I think it was Ruby Wax said last week that the other pandemic will be that of mental health that will come out yeah. of this. Yeah, without, absolutely without doubt. There's lots of things we can do. It's just that it's, we're, we're late to the party in how responsible for our own mental health we are, that we've got to show up for it and do the stuff that makes us happy, not do the stuff that numbs us. And the stuff that numbs us is easy. It's yeah. much easier in many ways, yeah. Move on to a story you picked in The Independent, uh, and mm. this uh, is to do with, uh, well, uh, new parents and new parenting. Uh, so just tell us a bit about why you picked this. Oh, well, actually, you know what, Phil? I thought you listened to me, but this is a personal one. It's, it's why it's completely normal for new parents to have negative thoughts. And I was just thinking, I wish that when I'd had my kids, that people were having this kind of conversation, you know? But in my day, so like my eldest was 16. So, you know, it was the media presents new babies and new parents. It was almost like a white company advert. Mm. And it all looked lovely. And actually, it was messy and tiring. And it, like having a baby throws a bomb in the middle of your life. And you're expected to get on with it. And I just, just had a lovely morning reading this article thinking, God, it's so, things have really moved on in how we talk about stuff that's difficult and not presenting other people's lives as this beautiful utopian view. Mm-hmm. And actually, things are tricky. Same as the professionals that are just developing um, addictions. It's just yeah. life, life is messy. Well, uh, especially at the moment, isn't it? And I think, uh, 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 and you're right, I like that analogy you made there about um, uh, life is not a white company advert. And uh, and so often that is the uh, the perfect image that we're all supposed to try and um, uh, try and play up to, isn't it? Uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, and your area of specialty, uh, Jenny, uh, Article in Express, uh, which advises or certainly gives 10 ways to improve our health and well-being. Yeah, absolutely. And I picked this because I thought you'd like it because the first one thing is to get out on your bike and be outside. Very good. Oh, yeah, there's loads of that. That's great. (laughs) To get out on your bike. But it also, this probably goes against what I think, but also recommends cocktails only if they're organic. So I'm sort of wondering if some kind of, well, I don't know if this is maybe a paid article or something, but it was like, the future is in organic cocktails. It's like, find me a list I can get on board with. If you ever tell us to get on your bike and have a cocktail. Yeah, that was a good article. <laughs> uh, and, and in t- I mean, you know, we, we're going to, again, like I say, hear more about um, uh, 
health and well-being and, and mental health in, uh, in particular. Um, and if people listen to this this morning, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's only just got light in the last sort of five or ten minutes or so. Uh, the clocks go back, don't they, this coming weekend. We are now entering that time of year where if we're not careful, uh, we can, you know, it, it's trying to find little bits of solace. It's why I mentioned Strictly this morning, because it brought glitter, mm. it brought glamour back into mm. our lives. And it, and it added to a bit of escapism, uh, didn't it, this morning? Uh, anything you would pass on to our audience this morning, given what you do there as a self-help expert that might help improve your uh, health and well-being? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And really, it's, it's my message all along, is that, and it's not a popular one, is that it is our responsibility. And it's why I, I liken mental health, well-being, to going to the gym. If you said to me, well, you know, Jen, what are you going to say about getting fit? It's like, well, you actually have to go and get fit. No one can do it for you. And the well-being stuff, it's exactly the same thing, is that if we, we you can take a meditation course, you can go and do lots of different things that you learn, lots of skills, but actually we are the ones that have to put it in place. And so while we're looking at the winter coming and the tops going back and it getting darker and worrying about it, actually this is the time to start doing your daily practices, doing your journaling, a gratitude journal is a fabulous thing to do. Write down five things you're grateful for. Even mm. when you're really low, it could be simply that you needed to go to the toilet in the night and you had legs that could walk you to the toilet. I mean, that's gratitude. one of the things to be grateful for. Gratitude lists. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's crazy to look for the good stuff. Final story, uh, you picked this from the local uh, newspaper, The Cocktail, uh, McDonald's, uh, uh, who want to give families uh, a thank you McNugget. They want their children to give their parents a thank you McNugget. Right. And it was just one of those moments of, like, heart things of, well, one, I don't order a McNugget to cook it, really, actually, but also <laughs> I'd rather have a quarter pounder. Me too. It's like, is that it? <laughs> one that McNugget? One McNugget. Don't even get a sweet and sour sauce dip with it. <laughs> and you know what? If there's eight McNuggets and they get the seven themselves, <laughs> it just felt like a really sad way to say thank you. <laughs> so I could have a lion, I could have one of those organic cocktails. Yes. Or I could, well, just, there's loads of ways to say thank you to my kids. The kids are listening. There's loads of ways to thank me for lockdown than, than a McNugget. Cocktail sound increasingly more attractive the more we have this conversation, oh, Jenny, don't they? They really do. Okay. Uh, what's on your agenda uh, today and this week, Jenny? What you got planned? Busy week coming up? Uh, uh, well, it's half term, so uh, no, I'm running the kids around as we usually do, and um, I'm probably going to a spin class. Oh, wow. Oh, all right. Okay. That sounds all very active. Yeah. Well, involves getting on a bike, and I'm all for that. So, <laughs> good stuff. Jenny, good to hear from you. Thanks, as ever. Appreciate it. No worries, Phil. Nice to speak. Jenny Critchlow uh, in uh, Claverton, a lovely part of the world. Lived for about uh, 10 years of her life in, uh, in Claverton. Uh, self of expert, runs the Peace Gym. Uh, her view of the newspapers for you this morning. On the way for you before 8 o'clock this morning, we're going to talk about. Um,